Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. I'm always excited to talk to young people. There is so much to learn from all of you. Today's topic is the MBA advantage. I want to start with my own story. I have two PhDs and two master's degrees. I'm not promoting myself. Sometimes this uh, presentation is given to you by my colleagues. So that's the reason why I put uh, my picture there. Out of all the advanced degrees I've done, MBA helped me answer three important questions. Three important questions. They are, who am I? What is happening around me? And what is my dream for humanity? Questions for you. Self-knowledge, a, a deeper understanding of what is happening around you and uh, your dream for humanity. Let's look at one by one. It's not always about your uniqueness. It's also about our similarities with other human beings. Maybe about 40, 50,000 years ago, modern humans have moved, started moving out of Africa. We all like to have fun, like to be happy, have good food. We all need safety, many things in common. But also, we are unique. Some of us are risk-taking. Some of us are more passionate. Some of us are persistent and focused. Some of us are like Steve Jobs, creative, passionate, also goal-driven. It's also important to ask ourselves, finding the inner meaning, what is it all about? Some of us are very empathetic. We would like to lead. We would uh, stand out. It's all about your, your uniqueness. Not just about your uniqueness, it is also about our similarities. It's about knowing yourself. I want to talk about four extraordinary individuals here. When we are thinking about, about MBA, corporations, startups, these four extraordinary individuals come to my mind. Akio Morita of Sony, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, Herb Kelleher of uh, Southwest Airlines, and Steve Jobs of Apple. Something particularly interesting about them, especially I can directly relate to the co-founder of Sony, Akio Morita, and Steve Jobs. Their famous statement is this, we do not serve markets, but we create them. When initially, Sony was thinking about launching their Walkman, by the way, Sony Walkman created more value for Sony than any other products till today. So when they went around and asked people, would you like to listen to music on the go? Most of them said, no, we would like to sit down, sip a cup of coffee and listen to music. Today, you know, most music is consumed on the go. Same way. When Steve Jobs was dreaming about iPhone, you know, we all spent a lot of time scratching on a glass surface. I don't think people had an understanding of the extent and the profound nature of what a smartphone could do. So that's why this famous statement of not stereotypical market, market research and serving uh, the markets, no, creating interesting market opportunities. Combine these four companies, their value is more than four trillion dollars larger than Indian economy. So that's the idea of uh, being extraordinary and being unique. Before going into the details, I want to encourage you to think about what success means to you, you as an individual. It could be about money, it could be about fame, it could be about likes, power, followers on uh, social media and many other things. But the, my call for action for all of you is please define success for yourself. Don't 
go with a stereotypical idea you got it from your parents or your friends and uh, the society or opinion makers you should define success for yourself once you define success for yourself there is very going to be very little competition you need to carve that unique space for you now what is a career for two important ideas it's a journey and also it's an opportunity it's an opportunity to learn it's an opportunity to help it's an opportunity to communicate and express yourself it's also ultimately if possible an opportunity to change the world around you it's a it's a journey it's an opportunity to when you make your career decision or a decision to start an MBA study there are, these three M's are very important money match and meaning with time people's relative importance on money would change all of us all, almost all of us like money but that's not the same extent when you are in your 20s or 30s or in your 60s match fit with the job you're doing and finally the meaning of all is very important money match and meaning the relative importance of these three M's would change with the time Warren Buffett last year said something very interesting money is important but don't choose a job just based on how much it is going to pay you choose based on meaning and match now what is changing around you it's very very important unlike the seasons change changes what is happening is not typically in cycles some of it is in uh, some of it you see in cycles but generally changes happening has been quite profound and serious impact on human lives and uh, humanity last 500 years have seen many many changes starting with the uh, new philosophy of life it's not just about a small group of people around us it is also about a larger group today people think about the world the humanity in total technologies have changed starting with the first industrial revolution about 300 years ago steam power electricity automation today internet of things artificial intelligence big data analytics everything is changing and finally world population has increased from about half a billion to almost 8 billion 7.9 billion as of today and life expectancy have increased to almost 75 years plus those are the two important changes of course a lot of technological changes starting with uh, the internet world wide web and artificial intelligence and broadband and everything two numbers 2.5 billion and 7.9 million you know 7.9 billion is the world population but 2.5 billion is the unique number of visitors every month to facebook that's the way the world is moving this hyper connectivity is creating so much data you might think that all these data are not of high quality but so much data but the chunk of high quality data produced is also enormous through data analysis visualization we can uh, uh, gain quite a bit of uh, valuable uh, information a question to you all what a doctor can do today what machines can't my Fitbit it's a cheap one more than six seven hundred million people are wearing this whether it's a Fitbit or a Apple watch or whatever so much data is being generated and a typical doctor's visit is for 15 20 minutes the doctor will check your chest maybe your throat your temperature feel your pulse but these devices would know way more than a doctor can um, kind of know in about 15 20 minutes of visit this is the dashboard of my Fitbit you can see how many hours I have slept how many steps I have taken how many kilometers I have walked what is my resting heart rate all the information is there and imagine this is not just from one person it's from six seven hundred million people's data that means billions of data points are collected every day 
and through smart algorithms we can know more about our health and customized medicine is possible these days and why is then typical doctor's job is not changing why medical profession is going through a, why not it is it uh, goes through a transformation because rule making typically lacks technological advances another question whatever we think and do nature of jobs are going to change and i can guarantee you that an mba education is one of the best things you can do today to make the best use of this changing nature of uh, jobs you can see there on the bottom left hand a manufacturing unit of a car company this is a toyota company in japan near a city called nagoya i had the fortune of visiting this place about 3 years ago and about 25 years ago 25 years ago i could see unfinished cars moving people are assembly today i didn't see anyone there no human beings there a room full of robots they don't bump into each other they are managed they are controlled by smart algorithms this is what is happening now if you look at how the industrial uh, industry has been evolving industrial revolution 1 steam power then comes electricity automation and ai steam power replaced most jobs needing power and speed automation and electricity combined replace most jobs needing precision and repetition precision and repetition today ai revolution is replacing most jobs needing abstracting simple rules from large sets of data but what kinds of jobs are going to be there for the future for all of you those jobs which are cognitively complex morally and ethically challenging where you abstract simple rules from non routine small sets of data it's not abstracting simple rules from large sets of data small sets of data cognitively complex morally and ethically challenging those are the jobs you would uh, be uh, taking uh, making use of those are the opportunities going to be in front of you you should make the best use of it people would argue that there's also it is also important to instill or important to engender more and more empathy because a lot of decisions are made by thinking about the other person so at our uh, business school we call empathy is the mother of excellence what is excellence excellence is wanting to do something better than before whether it is about cooking or whether it's about writing a report or whether it is about giving a speech wanting to do it better than before and before for whom for somebody else think about it whatever you do you do typically for others most of what we do is for others so empathy the starting point of knowing their emotions and feeling with them if that is the starting point you would do a much better job so that's the reason we call empathy is the mother of uh, excellence now you look at this 2 by 2 on the bottom axis it is about routine or non routine on on, on the y axis is cognitively complex cognitively challenging or manual so the top right hand side all those jobs listed are excellent jobs for mbas and this is the real mba advantage mba is designed for training youngsters for taking up the challenging jobs of industry 4.0 industry 4.0 is mainly propelled by the revolution of internet of things broadband artificial intelligence deep learning machine learning etc so that's the job those are the opportunities and then comes to the question of what's your dream for humanity your dream for humanity and what kind of career you want to pursue would have quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of overlap it could be new india it could be clean india it could be an india where our mothers and daughters and sisters can move around freely with pride it could also be a poverty free india 
technology uh, for all, a sustainable India, a happy place, so or a globalized world, your, your dream for humanity will also influence what kind of uh, jobs you want to, uh, to seek. As I was telling you, getting into this journey of excellence is the only way to achieve that dream wanting to do it better than before, wanting to do it better than before, starting point is empathy. Especially when you think about uh, your dream for humanity, empathy is the starting point. We started with uh, three questions. Who am I? What is happening around me? And what is my dream for humanity? So if you look at uh, a typical MBA curriculum, our business school or any other business school, a typical MBA curriculum will help you answer these questions. Who am I? We have a course called Organizing, Managing and Leading. We, we, we teach leadership, we teach ethics. All those are very, very uh, important. We teach human resources management, consumer behavior. All those would help you answer that question. What is happening around you? Marketing management, strategy, finance, all those uh, information systems, all those things would uh, tell you what is happening around you and finally your dream for humanity we have an excellent course called social and commercial entrepreneurship we have a course called sustainability in practice this course is spread across two semesters probably we are the only business school in india with a sustainability in practice course three plus three six credit hours so a, a good mba education would help you answer all these three three questions bit about our, our business school, you can see our, our mission is very unique. I can confidently tell you no business school in the world has this unique mission. Global sensitivity, excellent seeking, true professionalism and developing a social entrepreneurial mindset. Global sensitivity is not just about understanding different cultures. It's also about understanding their politics, history, language, geography, everything possible to have that uh, understanding about uh, various cultures. What is excellent seeking? As I was mentioning before, wanting to do it better than before. It's not about reaching uh, high quality or perfection. Quality is all about meeting a set standard. Excellent seeking is always going beyond that. Today I want to do it better than what I have done yesterday. So that idea of wanting to do it uh, better than before. Social entrepreneurial mindset is all about what is good for the company, what is good for the corporation should be good for my community, my state and my country and the world at large. That is the mindset. We are not talking about making everybody a social entrepreneur. You could be a serious high-flying corporate professional, but the decisions you make should be good for your company and the community and the country and the, and the world at large. So that's the idea. And our idea, our philosophy is not just corporations and uh, shareholders at the center, corporations and society at the center. We just don't believe in maximizing value for only for the shareholders. We believe in free human spirit. Of course, corporations should make a lot of uh, profit, but we should also take care of all the stakeholders. So that's our idea. And the tagline of our business school is New India Starts Here. What's our dream for New India? I was uh, talking about an India where our mothers and sisters and daughters can go around freely with pride. New India is also a happy India, sustainable India a model nation for the world. It's not about how many bombs or fighter planes we have. Let other nations copy the way we organize our society. That's the dream for uh, New India. At, at our business school, we are very serious about uh, engaging our students. We, we, we think about deeper engagement as much as possible, spending as much time as possible with our students teaching and learning from them and learning together and mentoring them and rigorous evaluation and also we, we truly believe in uh, co-creating uh, excellence you, you will see that and when you come and join as an MBA student you have already done so much in your life you are 20 some years old sometimes you're 30 some years old you have done so much in your life you have a lot of knowledge a lot of experience but don't uh, 
make or let your experience and knowledge just hijack your MBA study. It is not, this two years should be transforming. That means all your knowledge and experience and your network and where you worked and where you are living and your beliefs and your values should not just uh, hijack your MBA experience. MBA experience should actually help you challenge, refine, modify, make it better. So let's make the MBA experience a, a serious one because it's two years of uh, dedicated learning and uh, experiencing. Now, you can see that uh, we are very unique. Uh, we, we think about innovative pedagogy, the idea of classroom as a campus as classroom, uh, globally connected uh, business school, excellent um, faculty, sustainability, social entrepreneurship, a good corporate connect, all, all those. When we think about innovative pedagogy, we have several in-practice courses. In-practice courses are given towards the end of uh, your first year, that means towards the end of second semester, to give you an idea about what kind of specializations you are going to get in. We have in-practice course, marketing in practice, operations management in practice, finance in practice, information systems in practice. This is a very interesting uh, way to help students understand uh, what they are going to get into. Also, remember, almost all specializations our students can freely choose. We do not restrict students from, you, only these many students can choose this or that. We let them choose freely. And also, when we think about uh, campus as classroom, we let them join various real-time campus activities managing the campus, managing the cafeteria, managing academic operations. We involve them and they actually learn while doing it. We will also give them opportunities to redesign our campus operations and doing things to ultimately achieve excellence. What is excellence? It's not a goal in itself. It's kind of a moving goal wanting to do it better than before. Our campus is clean. A beautiful campus near uh, near Chandigarh. You can choose from 10 plus um, options. Only our uh, BABD, Business Analytics and uh, Big Data is uh, a, a kind of a super specialized MBA program where we will also check your mathematical aptitude. Other specializations you can uh, freely uh, choose. Several global opportunities, several universities in the US and Europe and Israel. You can go for a Three semester plus two semester, you get our MBA and an MS from uh, from the foreign university. You can also go for a semester or a summer internship. There are many universities in our our list. That list is uh, only growing, and our sustainability in practice is another uh, interesting, uh, unique um, characteristic of our our curriculum. We have our own interesting frameworks to study and understand sustainability. What you see, we call a 6E framework. We look at everything we do on the value chains of corporations. This is not only a tool for learning. It is also a tool for consulting and actually performing. We look at everything through these six lenses. Energy, essential materials, economics, ethics, environment, and expectancy. Expectancy is related to the knowledge and education and confidence. This is our 6 e framework and there are at least 40 plus project teams working over a period of two semesters in real life sustainability related uh, projects. Strong uh, corporate connect, All, uh, around uh, 50 to 60 companies come to our campus, our business school campus, and almost 400 companies come to main campus in, in Patiala. Top 25% uh, of the students' uh, average salary is almost uh, 10 lakhs and our highest last year was 22 lakhs. Even if you're in the bottom 50% uh, age, it's, it's close to 5.5 to 6 lakhs. So we have no problem in uh, bringing corporations to our campus 
our, our biggest challenge is encouraging our, our students to keep motivated and make the best use of the opportunity, learning and experiencing opportunity give, we give uh, here at the Elam Thapar School of uh, Management. We are highly ranked. The last three years, if you look at it, our rank has fluctuated from somewhere from 42, 43 to, to 53. We are, on an average, we are somewhere around 50. There are 3,000 plus business schools in the country. Our university is also highly ranked, uh, University of Thapar Institute of uh, Engineering and uh, Technology. Just to remind you, the, the three questions, who am I, what is happening around me, and what is uh, my dream for humanity. So we are more than happy to answer your questions. My colleagues are also here. We all will uh, try our level best to answer all your questions. Thank you.